Did you see it? Well, did you? Didn't you? Did you? Didn't you? Go check it out, boy! Hey, welcome to Chetty and Lichen's Horror Party Massacre. This is movies you may have missed. We're going to talk a little bit today about The Wicked One and its sequel, Wicked Ones. It's filmed by Jonestown Films. Uh, director is Tori Jones. Uh, the first one was really, really good. It's a real fun, not, I won't say fun movie. It's a good movie. They did a real good job with it. It doesn't really bring anything new to the genre of slashers. But the way I realized today that one of the things that really appealed to me about the first one, and that I really liked, is the fact that the characters, not a one of them, you hate. In fact, your main characters, you're cheering for, you're rooting for. I, I was literally sitting up and going, please, please don't kill him. Don't kill him. Don't kill her. And that carries over into the sequel, too, with the two main characters. But we'll get into that in a moment. The uh, I even liked the asshole brother, and I was upset when he got killed. Yeah, she was. Um, not very gory, which is fine. No nudity. Which is awesome. Like I've always said, you don't have to have the TNA to make a good movie. Case in point. Yep, they had a potential to do a, a TNA shot, and they did not. They did. What this movie is, is there is a crazy guy locked up in a mental hospital that is supposed to be... The, apparently the director begs and, and does wondrous things to get the worst of humanity in her hospital. Um, because she wants to keep, keep them all there. Colin Miller killed his whole family as a child, or a teenager, I should say, and went on a little bit of a killing spree, we find out, and gets t caught, taken into this mental home. Well, standard story, he escapes. He goes back home where, standard story, there's a group of kids that are going to spend the weekend there and have fun. And, of course, he's there, and mayhem ensues. But, like I said, it, it doesn't bring anything new, per se, but the acting was really good. The characters were phenomenal. I didn't want to see any one of them die at all. No. They, and they weren't annoying teenagers, either. When he, we say kids, there was the, the main uh, guy and girl are engaged. They have children. We find um, that out in the second one. But um, they're not the typical teenagers, like, going out and doing drugs and being addicts and being assholes. Nothing like that. These are adults. There was a couple things I think they could have expanded on maybe a little bit. Like, was it real? what was really in the brother's Trevor? Trevor? I think the brother was Trevor. What was in his backpack that made him flip out so much? Is it what they implied, or was it something else? The relationship between the main guy and girl was done pretty well. I also thought they could have done a little bit more with the other couple. I don't remember their names, sorry. But they went to do their lovemaking in the barn. And I feel like that could have been a, one of the most... One of the sex scenes sex scenes that, I, that appeals to me the most is in Halloween 5... With the devil girl and her boyfriend, the cowboy, I think. And they go in the barn and do this. And it was just such a sweet, innocent, like like a first-time trepidness. To, I don't know, there was just something about it that was very beautiful. That's the same thing that felt like they had it here. I feel like they could have expanded that a little bit more. And given you a little bit more to work with. But it still, it gave that same feeling of two people who are truly in love, not just two kids that are looking at... Uh, I mean, yeah, when he gets up to go to the bathroom, he pulls the engagement ring out of his pocket. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that killed. Um, but the first one, really, really good. Great job. We liked it. We recommend it. Wicked One picks up... You mean the Wicked Ones. Yeah, Wicked Ones adds to the story of Colin Miller who was the killer from the first one, two accomplices. Yeah, these two little brats, children of the corn kind of brats, that killed their <laughs> dad and then killed their mom. 
and then they're smooching at the camera when they're taken away in the police car. And then, typical, ten years later, we have our original couple from the first one, the guy and the girl that were engaged and had kids already. We find out that they have kids, and now they're ten years later, so one's 17, I think, one's 18, and one's 8. Something like that. And so, it starts off with the two brats killing people, and then the typical fuck-up, whenever someone's transporting them out, they somehow break in, break out, or the Colin Farrell may have broke in and saved them. I can't remember how it Miller. happened, but typical, what did I say? Farrell. Farrell. <laughs> Miller, whatever, breaks in and gets them. And they're both loony fucking tunes. Yes. Yeah. One should be the son of Charles Manson. The other one's, you know, she gets shot in the head and stabbed. Hey! And... Hey! Spoilers! Well, she gets injured and just giggles about it. <laughs> so, and then the other one, the weirdo brother, that's Charles Manson wannabe, it rapes one of the daughters. Dr well, dry rapes because you can tell her panties are still on. Or it may have been, impl I don't know, it may but, have been a pull away. But, so when the brother it? comes in and rescues her and then he, the guy, I was thinking, if he rapes the brother, I'm done watching. Um, it started out great and then it went to this crow creature, got a little bit goofy. Yeah. The, Overall, uh, I enjoyed it, but not as much as the original. It got too goofy for me. The original was much better. I liked the original a lot better. The sequel, it added in the two bro the brother and sister who heard the same voices of the crow guy, whatever that was yeah, all about. Children of the Corn meets um, Amityville House. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't think it needed the addition of the... Crow guy to be as not, I don't want to say as heavy. There was a sequence in there with the crow thing that I think could have been taken out and maybe explore like some kind of urban legend type thing with it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that too much. And the this crazed brother and sister, I did not really care for. I thought they were a little over the top with their craziness. Overacting. No, I won't say overacting. They were just over the top. I just didn't care for their addition. I think we could have stuck with the... I think they could have toned those two down a little bit. Yeah. I was not real thrilled with the rape or the pseudo-rape, whatever you want to call it. Um, but again, your characters, your four main characters, the original two from the first movie, and their kids, you're rooting for all of them. You, you don't want to see any of them die. The parents, for me, more than the kids. Uh, if the kids would have died, I would have been, oh, yeah. that's too bad, but yeah. at least your mom and dad's alive. Yes. They brought back a character from the first one, Olivia, who gives messages to the mom and warnings. I wasn't real fond of that part either. I think that was... I didn't mind that part. I thought that was cool. I didn't like that part. But for what it's worth, the movie was still good. Still really enjoyed it. A little bit more gorier than the first one. And more bloody. More blood, more guts, more glory. Um, a little bit more graphic. You, you, there is ma rear male nudity. You see, you see the guy's butt. And um, uh, I believe you see a penis? No, no, no. Well, yeah, I could have done without that part, too. I forgot about that. But we won't carry on into that very much. It's... Mm -hmm. No need. The second one was good. The ending was really good. Uh, they kicked some ass. Did they kick enough ass? Let's hope they did, and they don't make a third one, but let's hope that they didn't, and they make a third one, because these are really good movies. I really enjoy them. Um, just got introduced to Jonestown Films with these two, and they're very enjoyable. The second one has a score by Rocky Gray, who is phenomenal. Just an amazing composer. We listened I really to the him. soundtrack on the way home from Fright Night, which was where we got it from. Amazing soundtrack. Uh, not just on the way home. I've been listening to it consistently seven days every day <laughs> on the way back and forth to work and to the grocery store listening to these soundtracks. So they're really good. Really enjoyed them. Um, but check them out. 
wicked ones and the wicked one the wicked the, the wicked, wicked one, one and wicked ones no the the wicked one plays on Tubi I think they said and Amazon Prime the second one and not yet you can get the I think you can order the movie from their website and I'll put a link down below definitely check them out they are popcorn worthy we hope you enjoyed this little review that we put out on there. little chaotic, which is what we like. But we hope you liked it, too. If you've seen either one of these movies and you liked them, comment down below. We'd like to hear your thoughts and your opinions. Until next time, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, share the channel. Outlander wannabe. Stay spooky. I, uh... I want to thank you. Anything you want, you, you just name it.